Today was the main AWS reInvent keynote by the new CEO of AWS, Adam Salipsky. There were a bunch of new service announcements made this year, and I wanted to give you all a quick summary of the major ones that came up. I've also put timestamps in the description section of the video in case you want to skip ahead. So Adam started by introducing a new processor that follows the popular Graviton 2 chip. You guessed it, he announced Graviton 3. Graviton 3, like the chips before it, is an in-house developed AWS processor that was created for cloud computing. The processor line sports lower energy use, faster processing, and a whole host of other features. The Graviton 3 is a big step up over Graviton 2, featuring 25% faster speed for general compute, 2x faster floating point and cryptographic computations, and 3x faster for machine learning workloads. These processors use up to 60% less energy than a chip with comparable specifications. On top of that, Adam announced a new EC2 instance called the C7G type that will use the new Graviton 3 based processors. Over the past year, AWS has announced support for Graviton 2 processors for services like AWS Lambda and ECS. I fully expect that in 2022, we're going to see support for these new processors and those services as well. Adam also announced a new TRN1 instance type for EC2 that's optimized for machine learning model training. The new instance features 800 gigabit per second network bandwidth and seems to be optimized for a machine learning training cluster where workloads are shared across many, many machines. Next up is a service called AWS Mainframe Modernization. Adam introduced this service by speaking to the number of financial institution customers using outdated legacy mainframe machines that are looking to modernize. With mainframe modernization, developers can shift their legacy mainframe infrastructure to the cloud, either using a lift and shift model or a refactoring process. If using the latter, AWS will automatically generate Java-based code out of the standard COBOL-based code that's typically used for mainframes. Another new service announced this year was AWS Private 5G. And I have to say, if anything was truly innovative and exciting this year, it was this service. Private 5G allows users to set up and scale private 5G networks using AWS infrastructure. AWS provides the hardware, configuration, and has no limits on the amount of devices that can connect to the network. The service offers a pay-as-you-go model that's pretty flexible and operates on a shared spectrum. I'm really excited to see how enterprise-grade consumers use this new service. It's applicable to so many different industries looking for lightning-fast connectivity to the cloud, and I'm excited to see how it's leveraged in the future. Adam spent a bunch of time discussing data governance this year, including databases, machine learning, data lakes, and analytics. And there's a couple different announcements in this category. Firstly, he announced row and cell level security features for LakeFormation, a popular AWS service that's used to aggregate data from many different sources and store it in a secure and reliable way. Row and cell level security allow administrators to apply granular access controls to data tables to ensure that data security isn't compromised. Alongside that, Adam also announced transactions for governed tables that support ACID. Using transactions, you can now rely on your data lakes to gracefully handle conflicts and errors between datasets, ensuring consistent views and eliminates the need for custom error handling code. Also in the data and analytics space is a new serverless announcement. Adam announced new serverless modes for popular analytics services, including Redshift, EMR, MSK, and Kinesis. I have to say that this is a godsend. Setting up and managing infrastructure for these services was a major pain, and I'm super glad AWS is taking the burden of maintenance off the hands of the developer and managing it behind the scenes. On top of that, you can achieve much lower cost using the serverless versions of these products since you'll only pay for the time that you're using the product. Next was a relatively small announcement called SageMaker Canvas. SageMaker is a service that allows folks to create machine learning models in the cloud. SageMaker Canvas piggybacks on a studio-style editor that AWS has released for other services such as AWS Glue and Step Functions. Using this new feature, developers can use the point-and-click studio to drag and drop elements into their canvas to create powerful machine learning workflows. Next up was a vendor-specific product called Goldman Sachs Financial Cloud for Data. You may have heard of Goldman Sachs before, they're a popular financial institution in the US. With this product, Goldman Sachs is making available a rich data set of financial data that it uses internally within the company. Users can discover, manage, and analyze historic financial data for their custom use cases. The next two announcements were aimed at the industrial sector. The first new service is called IoT TwinMaker. TwinMaker allows developers to create digital twins of their physical infrastructure. Using this service, developers connect physical devices like equipment sensors to the cloud. 
and can generate digital representations of their hardware. There are a ton of different applications for this type of service, including hardware efficiency, failure monitoring, cost reductions, dashboarding, and many, many more. All of the connected data updates in real time to the cloud. Lastly, it was another new service called IoT Fleetwise. Fleetwise makes it possible to collect massive amounts of telemetry data from fleet vehicles for analysis in the cloud. This can include things like driving speed, acceleration, braking aggressiveness, and a ton of other metrics that help business owners analyze their fleet health to improve safety. So that's it for this keynote summary. I'll be releasing more summaries later this week on the Peter DeSantis and Werner Vogel's keynote, so make sure to subscribe to get notified.